Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws, bringing you the sixth video in this using Mojo in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we'll be covering how to use the matrix commands that come with Mojo to aid us in rendering our game scenes. So let's go ahead and open up. All right, so first let's clear out all the stuff from the previous video, uh, kind of reduce any confusion that might occur. The matrix. We need to be able to focus. So I'll get rid of all that. We're not going to have any sounds. Nothing like that. So we'll leave it. So we just have our set update rate. Go in there. And actually, we're going to keep the ship image. We're going to load that back in. And just make sure you got your screen clearing and you're on render, and then everything else can be blank. All right. So first, let's reload. I accidentally deleted. Let's reload the ship. So we're gonna load image. Oops. Ship dot png, and it's gonna be one frame, and we're going to mid handle it. Now let's go ahead and get into our on render method. This is we're gonna be just about the entire time, and the two most important functions when dealing with our matrix are the push matrix and pop matrix functions and basically what these do is do is the push matrix takes whatever state the matrix is currently in and it kinda stores it so anything you do after anything you do to the matrix after the push matrix command is taken back out once you call pop matrix so let me just kind of show you what I mean here. So the first way I'm going to show you how to modify our matrix is to use the translate function. And it's just like that, just translate. And what this translate function does is it shifts the origin of our scene to a, a coordinate that you specify. So in this case, I want to set the origin of the scene to be 3, 20 comma 240 and that's going to be the dead center of our games game screen because it's 640 by 480. Now so you can see what that does to our game is when I just decide to draw my image, my ship image, and let's say I, okay, I want to put it at 320 by 240. Now instead of drawing in the center of the screen, it's going to start from this position and then it's going to be offset by this amount. So you can see when I run it instead of being in the center the whole scene got translated or shifted to the center and then everything else is offset so you can see the my ship is now down here at 640 by 480 or 640 comma 480 so if I wanted to say okay I want to draw my ship at the center so when I translate I'm already at center so I don't need to offset it by any so I just draw image at 0 comma 0 and when I run this you'll see that the ship is now in the center of the screen. And so now let's say we want to rotate this ship. One thing you can do is after you've translated, you call rotate, and this will rotate any further draw calls or more any other matrix commands like translate. So we'll rotate, and I'm going to have this rotate using the timer, and so it's just going to keep going in circles. And because I drew after I rotated and nothing else and then popped the matrix, it's going to rotate this image and pop the next time it comes around and translate. This translate's not going to react to this rotation because this translate and this rotate got popped back out. So when I run this, you'll see that my ship is going to be spinning. And did it all without having to draw, call the draw image overload with the, you know, with the angle and the scale and all that. So now let's say, see what happens when you put rotate before translate. And what's going to happen is it's going to rotate the scene and then move it. So, all right, you'll see that it rotated from the original origin which was up here in the top left corner and then moved and then drew the ship. So you'll see this is going to come back around. 
we wait long enough, so you can see this ship. So the whole thing is, you can think of it, this whole scene is just rotating around this spot right here. So the ship's going, coming back around. So pretty cool, right? And so that's one way you can, say if you want to set up a rotating camera for your scene, all you do is you just call this rotate before you call anything else, and then you can have this rotating camera effect. And now we're going to put this back so we can go back to rotating our image. And let's say we want to add, and we're going to draw it a couple more times, and then we'll offset these. So we'll offset by 128, 0, and we'll draw our ship again, and we'll offset, we'll put it in 128, 0, so on the other side. So when we run this, instead of all these being rotated in individually, they're going to it's the whole scene is going to rotate when you call this, and then everything that's drawn is going to be offset based on this angle. So when I run this, you'll see that it's translated to here, then rotated, and then moved 128 this way and negative 128 this way to draw this other ship. So, so that's, that's pretty cool, right? And I'll find information. Pretty neat. And now let's say we want to bring the size of our ships back down. So the way to do that, you can actually scale your entire scene by a certain value in the x direction and the y direction. In this case, I'm going to cut everything down in half, make it everything half as or twice as small, half as big. So when I run this, come on. So you'll notice instead of being in the center now it's all shifted up here into the top left and what's happened is when you call this scale not only does it scale the size of your images it also scales your whole coordinate system so now 320 by 240 is right here and your actual you know your render space is now actually instead of 640 by 480 it's now 1280 by 960 so now the new center is 640 by 480 around here somewhere. And so this is where the, the matrix comes in handy when you want your game to look the same on all devices and all setups. So what you'll, find, what you'll do is figure out the screen resolution of the actual device you're on, then you'll figure out a new sc a scale value based on what you actually want to show. So I actually want to show 640 by 480 and if I'm on a system that renders at 1280 by 960 then I'll actually want to double everything to make it look the same. So now let's say we want these ships to rotate independently of each other. So one thing you could do is before you rotate you actually call push matrix to push it again then you'll do your rotating and drawing then you'll pop you say pop here and then it'll pop it back out and then those rotating and drawing will or that rotation won't apply to the next one and so you can rotate them independently but what we're actually going to do is create a new method to kind of make it cleaner and nicer and so we're going to throw this method down below on resume and we're going to call this method draw ship and it's going to take the x position of the ship we want to draw the y position and then the angle we want it to draw it and now inside this method we're actually going to push the matrix and we're going to translate to reset the origin to set it to the position we want to draw our ship at so we're going to set it to the x and y then we'll rotate using the angle that's passed in and then finally we're going to draw our ship and then add 0 0 because we translated to the ship's position so we don't need to offset anymore then we're going to you call pop matrix to pop these changes to the matrix back out so it restores it to the original or t restores it to what it was before we called draw ship which in this case was it, with it scaled and we're going to take this translate out so it's going to put it back to where it's just a regular matrix but it's scaled down to half in both x and y and it's going to do that every time we call draw ship so we're going to call draw ship and then now that we haven't translated beforehand we're going to do it with the draw ship method to translate to the center of our screen or to 320 by 240 because it's not actually the center anymore because we scale this down and then the angle will pass in our milliseconds divided by 50 
and now we can just call this draw shapes function as many times as we want and it's going to draw make all those changes to the matrix and then pop back out and those changes won't apply to the next draw ship so now we can set this to 120 we can set this over to 5 and then we can move this down 200 to 440 now when we run this you see we got all our ships drawing but they're all rotating independently so that's pretty cool, right? It's cool. Okay, finally, there are some more advanced commands you can use with the matrix. First one being transform. And what transform takes is either an array of six floats that you can manually apply to the matrix, or you can do them with individual arguments, say 12. 14 and 1 and 0 and these are really only for people that are matrix savants you can look in the documentation to see exactly what those do this just takes the original matrix and then multiplies it by this matrix to get a new amount and you can also use get matrix so, and what get matrix does it returns a float or it returns an array of six float values so we'll get a float array assign it to get matrix so this will get the values of the current matrix and then you can make your changes to all your mat values, your matrix values uh, one, but you make all your changes and then you can say set matrix and then pass in this array and that's how you can set your matrix manually to do other crazy operations to the matrix but I'm not going to go into that stuff you can play with it if you want but I've actually never needed to do anything except for scale rotate and translate it for any of my games so so that'll, that's it that's the matrix it's kind of confusing at first but once you get the hang of it you find it's really useful in a lot of applications so play around with it have fun with it and this is it for the mojo tutorials so I hope you join me in my following series where I start making some games so see you there